Hello and welcome to the first ever live streaming event for accepted students at Macaulay. My name is Daniel Allen and I'll be your host for this information session. I graduated from Macaulay at Hunter College in 2008 with a degree in Media Studies in Chinese. I'm now a video producer here in New York and I'm the president of the Alumni Network. So we're streaming to you live from the reading room in our 67th Street Brownstone in Manhattan. And first, I just want to congratulate you. You've been accepted to Macaulay and you're now part of a very selective, high achieving and unique group of people. The intention of this session is to help you make an informed decision about Macaulay being the right fit for you. You're going to hear from seven current students and one new student representing the eight CUNY campuses of the Macaulay Honors College. And my hope is that my experience at Macaulay will also help to inform your decision. Macaulay students and graduates have built a reputation for success in the 12 short years that the program has been in existence. Here at Macaulay, we like to think that we're training the future leaders of New York City and beyond. We've sent our graduates to top-tier medical and law schools. They've become Fulbright scholars, Rhodes scholars, and many work in business, journalism, government, companies like Ernst & Young, The New York Times, Morgan Stanley, and the U.S. Department of State. Something you might not know about Macaulay, we have our own sports team. I have here the New York Times article from yesterday. It says, playing a wizard's game on ordinary broomsticks. And in case you couldn't guess, yes, Macaulay has its own Quidditch team. Yes, the Quidditch from the Harry Potter series of books. And they're not just any Quidditch team. They're competing in the World Finals in Florida among 80 other teams uh, later this year. And while we're doing a little show and tell, here's a photo of my dorm circa 2006. And I'm not showing you this just because I want to embarrass myself. My friend in the photo with the long hair, his name is James Manzello, and he is a, an alum of Macaulay who went on to an acting career. Last year he was an, on an MTV hidden camera show called Totally Clueless. So why am I telling you this? To demonstrate that your college experience here will be completely unique compared to other schools. There's no other honors college that turns New York City into your campus. There's no other college in New York that brings together such a diverse and multi-talented group of students. There's no other college that offers you a debt-free honors education of this caliber. So in the next 45 minutes or so, you're going to get a lot of information. We've broken the presentation into three sections. In the classroom, in which we'll talk about academics at Macaulay. In the second section, outside the classroom, we'll cover internships, study abroad, and student life. And in the third section, beyond the classroom, I'll give you a little bit more information about my fellow alumni and what they've been able to achieve. And I just want to remind you, at any time during this presentation, you can ask us a question. Go on Twitter and tweet your question at Macaulay Honors, one word, Macaulay Honors. At the end of the presentation, we'll check in with your questions and continue the conversation on Twitter. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce our first group of student panelists. And uh, I'm going to start directly to my right, Renisha Pierre, from, from Trinidad by way of Brooklyn, is a junior at Lehman College in the Bronx where she studies social work and sociology. Welcome. Shang Xie was born in China and emigrated to New York at the age of eight. He attended Stuyvesant High School and is now a junior studying neurobiology at Hunter College. Welcome. Michael Horahan hails from Staten Island. And he'll enter Macaulay this fall as far, part of our first ever class of students at John Jay College, where he plans to study law and criminal justice. Kanika Kana on the end. She's a senior at College of Staten Island, majoring in political science, minoring in Spanish and English literature. This fall, she'll begin her master's degree in public policy at Brown. And she's interned for Congressman Michael McMahon. And as a grant writing intern for a consulting firm, when do you sleep? Okay, okay. Um, so, Renisha, I want to ask you about something that, that academically makes Macaulay stand out. You've completed all four of our New York City seminar courses, and each one of those you take uh, each, the first four semesters that you're here, freshman and sophomore year. So, can you take us through each one of those seminars and some of the experiences you had? Sure, no problem. So, we start off with seminar one, which is titled Arts in New York City. 
And that seminar, we look at New York City through the lens of art. So we visited um, various Broadway productions, um, opera shows, dance performances. Um, and we also questioned our identity, how we are vehicles of art. We sh um, shaped the arts of New York City. So we crafted poetry, um, digital stories, using ourselves as art. Um, in the second seminar that was titled Peopling of New York City, we looked at who makes up New York City. We studied immigration patterns of New York City. Um, but we did that through the lens of food this time. Um, so we studied different foods, food ways and how they transmit culture, values, inequalities, power, um, various things like that. And we also looked at how food is present in our own cultures. Um, in the third seminar titled Science and Technology in New York City, um, we basically saw how New York City is advanced technologically and scientifically. And we also visited the Indian Point nuclear power plant. Um, for the last and final seminar, after we figured out how New York City is shaped by arts, the people, the science and technology, we also studied policy, how policy informs New York City. Um, and we looked at that through the lens of homelessness, the homeless population. And we, as students, crafted our own policies to address that population. So as you can see, these seminars, they were small, but they were also um, very discussion-oriented. They were challenging and you saw New York City in a whole different way by taking them. That's great. Uh, so, Shang, I, I want to move on to you. You've known what you wanted to do for a very long time. Yeah, pretty much. Um, I always like helping people, and I always really like science. So, um, since a very young age, as far as I could remember, I really just want to go into medicine. So, you're, you're, you're training, you're taking pre-med classes now to go to medical school. What's been your experience with um, some of the options that Macaulay offers in terms of being a pre-med student? So I think one of the most important part of um, really pre being a pre-med is the advising. Uh, you have your advisors at the, each campus, and Macaulay is a really small college. Um, at Hunter, there's only about 140 kids per class, so you really get to know your advisors on a first name basis, and that's really important because um, when it comes down to writing the recommendation letters or you know having someone to go to, someone who has professional experience to go to and like ask them about your resume, your um, personal statement, uh, it's really important to have that preparation. And not only do you have your advisors at um, the individual campuses, but you ha also have a full set of advisors here at uh, Macaulay who can help you with um, reading your personal statements. For example, um, Mike Lam and I, like we frequently sit, uh, have sat down. Right, Mike Lam being the, the graduate fellowship right. advisor here in the building. Right, and staff. also uh, Jim Morozo, mm -hmm. who's the dean for uh, academic scholarships here at CUNY. And we have sat down one-on-one, -on -one going over my personal statements. So it's very personalized, and without them, I really don't think I could have gone to the uh, Harvard Medical School internship that I did for last summer. Right, and you also interned at Weill Cornell Medical School and Mount Sinai. Right. Yes, that's, wow. Um, I also wanted to ask you, you, you had, we had been speaking before about the pre-health club. Can you tell us a little bit about that in terms of how there's a student organization that's also offering support for pre-med students? Right, so the pre-health club is really uh, f focused not just around um, medicine. Uh, we have taken a focus to other fields of um, health, such as public health and also dentistry. So what we do is really go out to um, medical schools and ask them if we could come and bring students to their campuses or have their representatives come and talk to students about issues in public health or medicine and the application process. For example, we have a yearly event with uh, Cornell Medical School that we, where we go and see their academic facilities. We got to go to their dissection room, which was really cool. And we also, <laughs> the yeah. dissection room? Yeah. They let okay. us go in there. You'll have to so tell us more about that another time. <laughs> it's not a really, format for that. Yeah, they were really nice. Um, they really liked Macaulay students there. Um, and we also had uh, Harvard Medical School and also Columbia School of Public Health to come and talk to us. So uh, a lot of people really do come and see. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, um, Michael, I want to move on to you because you're in a unique situation. You've accepted uh, your place here at Macaulay, but you're joining the first inaugural class at John Jay. We've, this is the first year we're having a class of Macaulay students at John Jay. Right, yeah. Why did you choose Macaulay? What went into your reasoning for that? And why did you choose specifically John Jay? Well, there, well to start with Macaulay, there were a few reasons I, uh, I chose Macaulay. Um, primarily because it's a great program. You know, and from my college experience, I was really looking to, you know, partake in a great program, a, a good academic program. But, you know, coming from a, a lower class family, 
um, I felt like I was going to have to compromise. You know, I felt like I was going to have to get, you know, maybe a subpar academic program. This way I wouldn't have to be in debt when I graduated. But Macaulay, you know, with Macaulay, I didn't have to compromise. It was, a, you know, a, a two-part deal. You know, n no debt because you get a f full tuition scholarship and a great academic program. Well, we're, we're excited to have you join us this fall. Um, what do you think, now you're, you're at John Jay for a specific reason. Uh, oh, yeah. Um, you know, what really attracted me to John Jay was their uh, mission statement. You know, they really want to create fierce advocates for justice. And in high school, I did mock trial for four years. And I, it really helped me cultivate the sort of passion I have within myself for, you know, law and advocacy and, you know, justice. And I consider myself a fierce advocate for justice, so I think that John Jay is the best campus for me. And we, uh, you have a, an idea already about how you're going to use your Opportunities Fund to help you reach your goal. We spoke about that before also. Right, yeah. Um, I want to use my Opportunities Fund to sort of help me finance um, LSAT prep courses and paying for uh, law school um, admissions fees and things like that, you know. It's been a lot, I know a lot of people have done that. It's been very helpful for them because right. I know those can be very large out-of-pocket expenses. Yeah. Um, Renisha, I just want to come back to you really quickly because I understand that in addition to pursuing social work, you're also a writer. So how has Macaulay helped you to develop that part of your interest? Um, because Macaulay offers such great advisement um, and People who are really dedicated towards your future and what you want to do and cultivating that. Um, I spoke to Dr. Gary Schwartz, who is the dean at Lehman, and he said, why not um, take advantage of that? Why not do it? And I kept thinking, why not? Why not? Because I put, it, I put creative writing almost at the side um, in going after social work. And so I decided, why not integrate my two interests? And then I heard of something called poetry therapy, and I was just like, what is that? And it's like, it makes sense. You can use poetry and creative arts as a therapeutic tool for people who have um, been exposed to extreme tra trauma, such as war, displacement, sexual violence, um, domestic violence. And so I'm deciding um, why not take advantage of that and get my MFA in creative arts as well as my MSW and integrate those two interests that way. Very interesting. Um, so, and then this summer, you're doing something interesting with your Opportunities Fund, is that correct? Yes, I am. This summer, I'll be taking advantage of the Opportunities Fund that Macaulay offers by going to Berkeley. Um, they have a summer creative writing program there, and it prepares you for an MFA program as well as your craft as a writer overall. Great. And, uh, you know, you're, in your case, you're not doing more, you're doing more than one thing. You're not doing one thing. Kanika, I want to come down to you. You're another great example of a Macaulay student who refuses to do just one thing. So can you tell us a little bit about, you know, what you're doing academically? And uh, I also understand that you're working on a book with your faculty advisor? I guess I am. Uh, since my freshman year at Macaulay at CSI, I've been working with Professor Flanagan on a book on uh, public opinion and New York City mayors through the years and seeing how that influences their policies, the way they run their governments, and it'll be coming out this November before the mayoral election in an ebook form, and I've been providing a lot of data for that. And, and But yes. you, one of your minors also is Spanish. Yes. Right. So tell us a little bit about um, studying Spanish and your, your involvement with the Latino Leadership Initiative. Well, I started learning Spanish in high school and I really wanted to continue with it because I'm really passionate about helping um, minorities in different areas. And my supportive housing work, a lot of it deals with reaching out to minorities and Spanish is a really great language to know. So last summer I attended Harvard, uh, the Harvard Kennedy School's Latino Leadership Initiative and right now we're working on a project at John Jay helping sophomores there um, stay in college and really put them on a pathway to success. Excellent, excellent. And tell me a little bit about what we call here at Macaulay this cross-campus community, right? Because we're spread out across the city but we all come together under the umbrella of Macaulay. What is the Macaulay messenger and why do you think people want to support this, this cross-campus community? Well, the Macaulay Messenger is an online student newspaper I started in my sophomore year at Macaulay. It's run through the Macaulay ePortfolio system and it covers campus news from all seven soon to be eight campuses as well as other news items like um, national, international, sport, science. Um, if someone wants to read it or write it, we'll cover it basically. And people 
really want to support initiatives like this because there are so many things we all have in common. Just because we're geographically apart doesn't mean that we can't share these interests right. and come together. So it's just one example of the many great things we have at Macaulay to harbor across You just didn't have enough to do, right? You have to <laughs> start out your own newspaper. Um, so everyone, lightning round. We're just going to go down the line, starting with Renisha. In one sentence, why choose Macaulay? Because it's in the best city in the world, and they offer such great um, faculty and advisement. Chang? Well, um, there's like a great diversity in terms of students, and you really have the chance to get to know your fellow peers. Also, there's a really big supportive environment from the faculty as well. Michael, why did you make your decision to join us in the fall? Um, you know, it's, it's a great program, provide a lot of opportunities, and uh, the full tuition scholarship does help. Kanika? Well, I decided to come to Macaulay because um, it's very intellectually diverse. Um, people are very supportive, students, faculty, administration. And also, if you really want to do many things, they'll give you the opportunity to do so. And I've been lucky enough to have that opportunity. Great. Thank you, guys. Um, now, we're going to move on to our next section of this presentation. We're going to take a short break. In the meantime, you're, you're going to watch a clip. And it's preparing you for the next section in the, where we're going to be talking about internships outside the classroom. And in the clip, you'll hear from some of the employers that have hired Macaulay students as interns and full-time employees. I'll never forget the first time that I met with the Macaulay students. We were sitting at a big conference table. Um, they were the big L-shape round the table. And, and I actually didn't really believe that they were that interested in public media. But the more I talked about it, I realized a couple of things. One, they're very smart. Two, they're very curious. And three, they're very interested in public media and media of all kinds. And I thought to myself, what a great resource to have these smart kids. I wonder if we can use them. I never thought at that point we'd have such a successful relationship as we do now. I think the, the Macaulay students have added so much to everything we've done. I think it's been a great relationship where they brought a lot of energy and a lot of competence and we've brought some larger packaging talents and together we've done some great work. One of the first things we did was something on the national parks. Ken Burns had done the national story. We wanted to do something about what people here locally remembered about their trips to national parks. It was the Macaulay kids who found some great examples of people who had gone to parks and had home videos and had their memories of that. They helped us find them, they helped us shoot them and together we put together a fantastic documentary. And I thought, wow, we would not have been able to do this without, without Macaulay. I would say if you hired a Macaulay kid, you'll never go wrong. I've been so impressed with what they brought to 13, by their drive, by their intelligence. Uh, I've never regretted a single relationship we've had with them, and I look to doing even more with them. I think that any organization that has even any opportunity to uh, bring uh, Macaulay students in will find that not only will they get an incredible satisfaction and rewards uh, from them, but they will make other people better. Welcome back. Just for full disclosure, in that video clip you heard from Neil Shapiro, who is my former boss when I used to work at the PBS station here in New York. Um, so I'm going to introduce you to our next group of student panelists here. Shirley Chung, who is to my immediate right, attended Brooklyn Technical High School, currently studies accounting and interdisciplinary studies at Baruch College. She plans on pursuing a master's in taxation, taking the CPA exam, and uh, she interned for Goldman Sachs and studied abroad in China and Italy. Thank you for coming. Sarah Gershon will graduate from City College with a degree in English in June, and she's an Italian minor. She spent last spring studying in Tuscania, Italy. Excuse me. She recently accepted a job in Florida working with Literacy AmeriCorps. Congratulations. And she plans on pursuing an MSJD with a focus on sports management. Jenna Pete is a junior at Brooklyn College where she studies physics education and women's studies. She's a Hertog scholar, a Revson scholar, and peer mentors freshmen as they ease into college life. She is president of the Brooklyn chapter of To Write Love on Her Arms, an organization that creates awareness about addiction, self-injury, and suicide. Chen Sha, at the end, hails from Atlanta, Georgia. He is a freshman studying economics at Queens College as part of the CUNY BA program, which allows him to craft his own major. He hopes to pursue a career in diplomacy while continuing to develop his lifelong interest in theater. So Shirley, come to you. I understand that you inter interned for Goldman Sachs. Tell us how you landed that internship. Okay. 
So um, I got my internship at Goldman Sachs during my sophomore year, and I was able to get that internship through a friend that I knew who, it, who I met at Baruch College, and she is also a Macaulay student. She was an intern at Goldman Sachs, and she, there was a position open, so she asked me if, she, if I wanted her to pass along my resume, and I said yes. And so she passed along my resume, and I got a call back for an interview. A couple of days later, um, I was in, given the offer to intern there. So I was really excited about that opportunity. And um, one interesting thing is that my friend was able to get her internship because of a friend that she knew, and that friend was also a Macaulay student. So it's kind of like students helping students, you know, pulling the next one along with you. I love yes. that. Um, so tell me about where you're headed next in terms of uh, interning before you, you graduate. Well, right, currently right now I am a senior, so um, this summer I will be interning at Ernst & Young in their audit department. And um, after my internship, I will be going into grad school for a master's in taxation. Wow. And um, something else that I think you get a chance to pay it forward with, you know, how you've been helped finding those internships and getting placement. You're also helping out your, stu your fellow students at Baruch College apply for internships. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes. So um, I work at my school's career center um, and helping students with their resume, cover letters, and doing mock interviews. So um, I was able to get a lot of my opportunities from learning from my um, upperclassmen, and I hope to you know, help my un the underclassmen in their uh, future careers. And just one more question for you, because I know that Baruch is a very strong business school. Most of the students there, a lot of them, maybe not most, are, are studying business. What are some of the extracurriculars that you have over there at Baruch that help you advance your business education? Yes. Well, currently I am a member of Ascend Baruch. Um, it is a professional organization which is not only at the student chapter but also in the national level. So there are all student members and also professional members. And, um, and being a part of this uh, club has really helped me build my professional skills. Um, during my sophomore year, I attended one of their convention and I was able to interview with an accounting firm um, right on the spot and I was able to really polish up my interviewing skills and my interview definitely gave me plen plenty of advices on my uh, future interviews. Very nice. Um, so I'm, I'm going to move down the line. I, I want to ask Sarah, tell me a little bit about what you're studying and how that played into the interesting uh, study abroad experience that you had. Well, I am an English major, so I do study a lot of literature and creative writing courses because that that is my major. However, I am an Italian minor, so I began taking Italian courses when I got to City College, and after four semesters of courses in Italian, I chose to study abroad in Toscana, Italy, which is a very, very small town, an hour and a half north of Rome. Um, I did that last spring. And that that the my courses at City College really um, gave me the background that I needed in order to go there and and study. How do you say how much is a cheese pizza in Italian? Quanti costa una pizza formaggio? I'm sure you said that a million times. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm sure you actually had a lot of great food there also, but um, <laughs> I wanted to to ask, uh, surely also you had an interesting um, study abroad experience and we have something in common. We both studied in China. So I wanted to bring up a few photos of the experience I had there for comparison. Um, and for those at home who are watching, I guess you could say I learned a lot, but um, seriously, I wanted to ask you, surely about your study abroad experience in China. Well, it was definitely an amazing experience. Um, I studied uh, Chinese history and so a lot of the places that I visited such as the Summer Palace, the Forbidden Palace, um, Tiananmen Square um, were things that I would study in class. Um, I was able to climb the Great Wall of China and I visited Hong Kong and went up to Victoria's Peak and uh, one interesting thing was that I had an amazing professor where, where um, on the first day of our class he took us to a tea shop um, right by the lake in the park 
and we spent our class time talking about history and drinking tea. It's great. I wish everyone has to get a great experience like that from their study abroad. Um, so I'm, I want to move down to Jenna, and I wanted to ask you because I think this is a great example of something that was a student-created initiative. It's a very original idea, and it's gone very far. Tell us about the think tank that you're involved with here at Macaulay. The think tank is a senior project um, done by Tyler Alterman. Um, he used Kickstarter to uh, secure the funds to renovate a box truck and turn it into a cognitive science lab on wheels. So he will be able to visit public schools and other parks and public spaces to inform and educate the public about cognitive science and how it can help them in their everyday lives. And I am a volunteer for the Think Tank's Brain Trust, which is a group of students that are helping Tyler um, make decisions about how to design the truck, how to um, plan events, to secure more funds and to um, make sure that the think tank will be around for a very long time. Great, and we don't we don't have a photo of it, but <laughs> I've seen photos, and it looks like an ice cream truck with a big, you know, plastic brain, brain on, on top, the top yeah. which is great. Um, so, but that dovetails with what you're already interested in, because you want to be a physics teacher, right? So, tell yep. us a little bit about um, you've done some classroom observations, even though you're not, you know, working on your master's in ed, but you, as an undergraduate, you've already done some classroom observations. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, I really love the education program that they have at Brooklyn College. They um, integrate classroom observation hours and even your student teaching into your undergraduate experience so that when you graduate, you are fully certified to teach. Um, and it's been really incredible to go into high school classrooms, elementary school classrooms, and really look at what the teacher is doing because when you're a student, you don't really pay attention as much right. to the atmosphere and the way that the teacher is managing everything. And it's really opened my eyes to the sort of teacher that I want to be and what I do and don't want to do in my own classroom one day. Excellent. Um, now, Chan, I want to move down to you. You're from Atlanta. You're not a New Yorker. This is true. And you came across Macaulay in an interesting way. Can you tell us about that? Uh, about two years ago in my junior year of high school, I googled free college and this was the second or third thing that popped up and uh, now I'm here. Here you are today. So as an out-of-state student, has it been hard for you to adjust to life in the city? Not at all. I think um, Macaulay definitely requires a degree of independence because the campuses are so spread out and you do sort of have to be a self-starter that way. But it's such a supportive community and it's a relatively small community. So when you get here, you're immediately made to feel at home. Great. And um, tell us a little bit about one of your extracurriculars, which is the Macaulay Theater Group. I'd love to know about that. Sure. So the Macaulay Theater Group is sort of a loose organization of people who are interested in theater, whether it's playwriting, whether it's small skits, whether it's improv comedy, or whether it's full-length productions. And we meet up and we try to make people's individual visions a reality in that way. So whether it's improv shows or full-length productions, we are just sort of involved in the arts in any way we can. So what's something that you guys are working on right now? Well, right now we're trying to do the improv group, which is a sort of subgroup of that's first comedy show ever. And we want to get four or five kids up in the cabaret right over here and do like an hour-long improvisational comedy show with audience suggestions. Wow, wow. And, and obviously uh, the cabaret space referring to the downstairs of the Macaulay Brownstone where we have a, a great space for performances and mm -hmm. they, we make it available to students and, right. and support those initiatives. And just finally, what is the Macaulay New Media Lab? This is something brand new and you're also participating in that. Sure. So uh, we have a director of this new program called the Macaulay New Media Lab named Dr. Albie Hecht. And he is the former president of Spike and the former president of Nickelodeon, actually just won an Academy Award for a short documentary. And he comes in and spends four or five hours a week with students designing uh, innovative ways to use media. Um, so for example, what we're working on right now is taking tweets from famous people and turning them into 14 second films. Um, so it's really a great example of how Macaulay brings major figures from business and the arts into the classroom rather than just assuming that you'll learn it in a theoretical way. I'm wondering what a 14 second film of a tweet from Kim Kardashian might yeah. look like. Actually, Kanye's are the best. We're starting with oh, Kanye. Oh, great. Yeah. Good, good choice. Um, so everyone, another uh, lightning round questions. We're just going to go down the line. In one sentence, why choose Macaulay? The connections that you can make. 
This is a completely unique program that it's really hard to find anywhere else. Choose Macaulay because you weren't just accepted because you have high academic potential. Uh, you were selected because you're, Macaulay thinks that you have something unique and very special to offer. Uh, we have a non-competitive but intense culture of success here that will strive you for, make you do your best. And uh, most of the time you come to the Macaulay building, there's free food. So <laughs> that is true. That's how I fed myself through most of college. Um, so we're going to take a break, another break now. Thank you to all our panelists. And we're going to watch a video clip of scenes from last year's freshman orientation. So it's going to give you all a taste of fun things to come. And when we come back, we'll discuss our third and final segment, Beyond the Classroom, in which we'll speak about Macaulay's incredible graduates. Welcome back. So now it's going to be my pleasure to speak to you a little bit more about life after graduation. Earlier I gave you a glimpse into our alumni achievement, but I wanted to share some more facts. Of our 1,902 alumni to date since 2001, uh, excuse me, 2005, 43% of our graduates have gone to pursue graduate or professional degrees within two years of graduation. And you can find a complete list of all of the graduate programs, law schools, and medical schools they've attended on our website. There's more to the picture than that, and I hope you'll spend some time on our alumni portion of our website reviewing the profiles of some of our alumni. We have lawyers who brew their own beer, cartoonists who've spent the past two years teaching English in Spain. I have friends who are Macaulay alumni who work for the Central Park Conservancy. They work on Wall Street. They're independent filmmakers. Two of our alumni founded The Hype Machine, which is a very popular website that tracks music blogs around the world. Another friend works at the United Nations. So I'd like to take this opportunity to let you know an important part of our very active alumni association is mentorship. We also get to do fun stuff. Last week we went to see Lucky Guy on Broadway with Tom Hanks, which was very, very great, uh, great show. But we believe in giving back. And if we have an alum who's in a certain field, and we have a student who's interested in that field, we always try to bring them together. So we're gonna show you an excerpt from a video now that was produced in 2010, and it's highlighting the lives of Macaulay graduates. You're gonna hear from a diversity of people, including an entrepreneur, an artist activist, a foreign affairs officer, and two educators. And before we start the video, I just wanna remind you, if you have any questions at all on anything we've discussed, tweet, at Macaulay Honors, just one word, Macaulay Honors, and we'll, after we come back from the break, we're gonna check in with some of your questions. Thanks so much. My parents are risk takers. They were born in China, they moved to Venezuela, that's where I was born. I came here in 1994, and I actually recently became a citizen, a US citizen, thank you. <laughs> My name is Liliana Chang, I am a businesswoman and a lawyer-to-be. I go to Cardozo School of Law and I am in my last semester now. 
I was a junior in Baruch College. I was a um, finance and investments major. My sister had this idea that she wanted to start a learning center. We started as a very small business. We had maybe five students the whole semester. And then it started growing. I started tutoring. Later on, as we grew bigger, I did mostly management duties. So I the paperwork, the registration, the marketing. And I really like it. I love being able to see someone learn and think. My name is Chinesia and I'm a Brooklyn-born artist and activist. I've been working at the Downtown Community Television Center in the Pro TV department and the program coordinator here. And I'm also um, an artist instructor, so I go out to high schools or I teach workshops. Currently, we are partnering with Big Brothers Big Sisters, so I've been doing a lot of workshops with them. I've been working on my own independent productions and doing a lot of uh, producing work, directing work, and cinematography. I just want to create art and save the world. Post 9-11, I think that's shaped a lot of people's approach to their careers, especially people who grew up in New York, and that probably led me into counterterrorism work to begin with. I'm Lauren Tellerman, and I'm a Brooklyn-born foreign affairs officer currently living in Washington, D.C. I work in the Bureau of International Security and Nonproliferation. ISN spearheads coordinating international consensus when it comes to WMD proliferation, multilateral uh, and bilateral policy initiatives. So whenever you hear about different conventions and international regimes being discussed or the coordination of diplomatic responses to certain countries and nuclear testing, that's frequently work that this Bureau would be involved in. To find something meaningful to do and to be happy to wake up in the morning to do it is important. I think my relationship with the students is a little bit different from the rest of the teachers because I am actually from the Bronx. The things that they have to deal with, I understand. My name is Nasrat Chowdhury. I'm a Bangladeshi American Muslim math teacher from the Bronx. You know, what we do is build a community where it's safe to be here. You know, have the students come here and you're really here just for their learning. Everything else falls away because you want to get to college. You want to go places. This is how you do it. You know, you need to focus on school. We as educators need to be moving towards integrating technology and not only understanding and utilizing the tools that are out there, but creating them when they don't exist. So we're sitting in the library of the Rhoda Sholem School, and I serve as the school's librarian and digital arts teacher. And I'm part of an educational startup called Media Midrash, which is sort of YouTube for Jewish educators that links video content with compelling curricular content. In the previous Macaulay video, I don't think past Russell would have necessarily seen himself working in education. The nice thing about Macaulay is that because of the financial benefits of Macaulay to graduate without any debt. It allowed me to take um, a position upon graduation in a small educational organization. If I had $100,000 in debt, $80,000 in debt hanging over my head, it would have been impossible to do so. The freedom that Macaulay gave me after graduation allowed me to find a career path that's actually been really amazing, engaging, and, and wonderful. You know, a lot of people are forced into decisions because there's debt to pay, and I was free to do whatever I wanted. It was the opportunity for me to take an unpaid internship, and that internship led to my job. I took an intercession workshop here at DCTV. I thought that would be pretty exciting to have a film under my belt and it kind of just evolved. I interned at Bear Stearns and I was able to compare between working in a small business versus working in such a big corporation and I ended up choosing to stay here. Thank you. Um, I hope you enjoyed that clip and again I encourage you to check out more of our alumni profiles on the Macaulay website. So the last thing you heard our alumni speak about in that video is how Macaulay's full tuition scholarship for New York State residents really opened opportunities after graduation. As you know, the unfortunate reality is that in today's economy, too many young people's lives and careers are on hold as they struggle to pay off student loans with few job prospects. According to a New York Times article from May 2012, the current balance of federal student loans nationwide is over $1 trillion. The average per student debt in 2011 was $23,000, with 10% of students owing more than $50,000 and 3% more than $100,000. It, it may not seem like it now, but receiving a tuition-free education at Macaulay could really make a positive impact on your entire economic future. And on a personal note, I became a homeowner at age 24, and I know that that would not have been possible without Macaulay's support. So at this point, I'm going to address some of the frequently asked questions that we get about Macaulay in formats like this. And we also checked in with the Twitter feed, so we know that some of those questions have been answered, but we're just going to share it with everybody in case you didn't see those um, responses. So the first uh, question is, when do you have to make a decision 
about whether or not you'll be joining us. That's May 1st. May 1st is the deadline to uh, make a commitment to attending Macaulay. Um, another question that we get a lot is on-campus housing. And we recommend that you go to your home campus to talk about that, um, to find out more information about the home campus options. The other uh, questions that we've been getting from the Twitter feed is about male-female ratio at uh, Macaulay. Um, at Macaulay, it's about 60-40, and it differs based on your home campus. I went to Hunter. It was closer to something like 70-30. Obviously, that school was uh, a women's college for many years, and it's continued to have that, that kind of breakdown. Um, classes at other campuses is a question we got from the Twitter feed. So, yes, you can take courses at other campuses, um, not, not at your home uh, campus. And we also have honors courses that are sometimes held at Macaulay. But sometimes that process can be a little bit confusing, but the advisors and your home campus advisors are there every step of the way to make sure that you get the classes that you want. Um, we also get some questions about applying for the Opportunities Fund. Now, everybody's required to write a proposal. It's very detailed. Obviously, we're talking about uh, you know, money that you're entitled to, but you have to prove a really strong case for why you want to use that funding. And it also gives you experience writing a grant, which is something that, you know, we think everybody should have. Um, question about study abroad. Uh, do you have to do you create your own study abroad experience or do you participate in existing programs? Some of the programs for study abroad are offered by Macaulay or already in existence. They, you know, you sign up for them and they're run by a home campus. So that's one way that people do it. Other people, they find a program that's on another, uh, excuse me, in, a, in a, a university in another country and they work it that way. So there's differing options there. It depends, again, on where you're going to school. Do we accept college credits? Absolutely. Uh, fours and fives on AP exams will transfer over and any college now credits that you might have taken in New York City will transfer into your Macaulay um, bank. Um, I myself, I, I came in with 20 college credits before I started because of APs and other um, college credits that I had earned in high school. So a lot of people that's the case and sometimes they knock out the prerequisites that you'd be having to take freshman year anyway. So the core classes, the core curriculum that you're required to take, yes, everybody has to take those four New York City seminar courses. I believe you also have to take four additional honors courses, whether they be at Macaulay or at your home campus. And um, you also have to maintain a 3.5 GPA or above in order to graduate from Macaulay. I think that is, it, it can be challenging for some people, but it really helps keep the academic standard of our institution very high. And, you know, I look back on it and I appreciated that because it really pushes you to do your best. The other question that I just wanted to address before we sum up here, if you had any dropout during this feed, the video dropped out or, or you, you didn't make it in time, this recording will be on the Macaulay YouTube page and you can view it there after the fact. So not to worry if you missed out on any part of this um, presentation. So, to sum up, in conclusion, you've had the opportunity to hear about all that Macaulay has to offer, from academic experience to internships and study abroad, to what some of our graduates have been up to. And we really hope that you found this information session useful, and of course, we hope that you will choose us for, for college. If you do, you'll be joining a cohort of students who are passionate about their education, they're passionate about the diversity of New York City, and their opportunity to shape the future as CUNY graduates. If you're the type of student who looks forward to college as a great adventure, 100% Macaulay is for you. And before we leave you, I just want to thank all the people. You can't see them, but they really helped make this thing come together. Uh, Mary Ann, Luke, and Charmaine in the enrollment uh, department here at Macaulay. Joe, Michael, and the entire IT staff. Mila, a Maca Macaulay graduate and our associate producer on this project and all of our student presenters and, of course, our student ambassadors from Macaulay who have been monitoring and replying to you on the, on the Twitter feed over there. So, and most of all, thank you to you, our audience, who joined us on this beautiful Sunday afternoon to learn about why Macaulay is the right choice for you. So thank you, and we hope to see you in September.